Hello everybody, today we will do our second video on isomorphisms. I encourage you to look at my notes before watching these videos if you can. Our class notes are publicly available in the description to this video below. And feel free to contact me if you have questions about the content. So last time we described isomorphisms intuitively. Intuitively, two groups are isomorphic if you can match up all the elements in a way that preserves the group structure. So as an example here in yellow, we have two groups that are isomorphic. One is z mod 4z, and the operation is addition mod 4. And the other group is the rotational symmetries of the square. Namely, you could rotate by 0 degrees, or 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, etc. And the operation is composition. And when we match up the elements, or color code the elements, black, red, blue, and green, similarly, you can see that their multiplication tables exhibit um, identical structures. In the multiplication table, we have a black, red, blue, green, black, red, and blue diagonal rows for both groups. You see the same diagonal uh, rows over here in this group of rotations. Today, we're going to make this definition precise. So an isomorphism phi between two groups, G and H, well, what is it? It's a bijective function from g to h, such that for all a and b and g, we have that phi of a, b is equal to phi of a times phi of b. All right, that's a mouthful, but let me give you an example. Here, g might be z mod 4z on the left. h might be this group of four rotations. And phi is a bijective function from one group to the other. Um, so the, here, the bijective function that we're looking at is 0 maps to rotation by 0 degrees, 1 maps to a rotation by 90 degrees, 2 maps to a rotation by 180 degrees, and 3 maps to a rotation by 270 degrees. All right. That's a bijective function. It's 1 to 1 and on to, or injective and surjective. But furthermore, this bijective function must preserve the group operation. So that's what this equation here encodes. Phi of AB equaling phi of A times phi of B is um, mathematical language for this map phi preserving the group operation. OK, so let me give you an example. Let's choose A and B to be 1 and 2, all right? So A and B are going to be 1 and 2. I'm going to view A as this 1 right here, and this B as, as this blue 2 right here. OK. So phi of A, B. Well, A and B, I combine them in my first group. So 1 and 2, I can combine them in this first group, Z mod 4, to get 3. OK, fantastic. And then I can apply phi to 3. Well, where did phi take 3? phi takes, took 3 to the rotation by 270 degrees. So on the left-hand side, when a was 1 and b was 2, phi of a, b on the left-hand side is this rotation by 270 degrees. On the right-hand side, what I instead could do is I could map 1 and 2 over to my new group. So when I apply phi to 1, I get this rotation by 90 degrees. When I apply phi to 2, I get this rotation by 180 degrees. And then I could combine phi of A and phi of B, or phi of 1 and phi of 2, in this new group. So in this new group, when I combine a rotation by 90 degrees with one by 180 degrees, I get a rotation by 270 degrees. So we indeed got an equality here. Whether, on the left-hand side, I combined 1 and 2 in the first group and then mapped over, or, on the right-hand side, whether I mapped 1 and 2 over and then combined the corresponding rotations. So an isomorphism is a function that satisfies this, uh, this equality for all A and B that you can plug in. Let me um, emphasize something here, which is a and B are elements of G. And so this multiplication between A and B is happening in our first group, G. Then I get an AB is in G and apply phi to AB 
to get something in H. On the right hand side, phi of A is in H, phi of B is in H. So this multiplication combining phi of A with phi of B is multiplication happening in H. We saw that in this example, one and two were my A and B. So on the left hand side, I combined one and two in the first group to get three. And then I mapped three over to get this rotation by 270 degrees. That was the left hand side. The right hand side instead was mapping one over to get this rotation by 90 degrees, mapping two over to get this rotation by 180 degrees, and then R90 and R180, which were phi of A and phi of B, are combined in the second group to get R270. So you get the same answer whether you take your elements and combine them and then map over, or whether you map your elements over and then combine them. Wonderful. So let's go through some more examples. First, let me say that it seems like this, this definition is asymmetric. G and H, I want to say, have the same structure, but my isomorphism goes from one to the other. It doesn't matter that G is first and that H is second. It turns out, no. If there's an isomorphism from G to H, then the inverse map going from H back to G is also an isomorphism. So even though this definition appears asymmetric, we had a map going from G to H. If you can find an isomorphism going from G to H, its inverse is also an isomorphism from H going back to G. All right. So the map phi from Z mod four to the set of rotations defined by mapping zero to the rotation by zero degrees, one to the rotation by 90 degrees, two to the rotation by 180 degrees, and mapping three to the rotation by 270 degrees. This is an isomorphism. It's the isomorphism that we just talked about. Let's do another example, checking the property of it being an isomorphism. Here, let's take A and B to be one and one. So combining one and one and then mapping over should be the same thing as mapping one and one over and then combining. And you can see that. If I combine one and one to get two and then map two over to get a rotation by 180 degrees, that's the same thing as mapping one and one over to get rotations by 90 degrees and then combining those two rotations by 90 degrees to get a rotation by 180 degrees. So what we've done here is we've just checked this property, V of AB is equal to V of A times V of B for a different choice of inputs, A and B. It turns out that for any A and B in Z4, um, with this map phi, V of A plus B, is equal to phi of A composed with phi of B as desired. This equation here is no different than the one up above. The only difference being that I've explicitly told you what the operations are in each group. So in Z mod four, the operation is addition mod four. That's why I've written addition here. And in this group of rotations, the operation is composition. And that's why I've written composition here. If you wanted to prove this property in general, that for all A and B, phi of A plus B is equal to phi of A composed with phi of B, instead of using this description of phi, a better description of phi would be using this algebraic formulation. So phi of any integer j is just the rotation by 90 times 90 degrees times j. So this algebraic description is useful for proving this property more so than, than this explicit list of where all the elements get mapped. Okay. Another example isomorphism is a map phi from Z mod four to the complex numbers one, negative one, i, and negative i where the operation in the second group is complex multiplication. So this map um, that we'll use as our isomorphism sends zero to one, sends one to i, two to negative one, 
and 3 to negative i. You can check that this satisfies the property of an isomorphism. If you want to check that, it's easiest to use this formula, that phi maps an integer j to i, namely the square root of negative 1, raised to the jth power. As another example isomorphism, let's consider the map phi from u8 to z2 cross z2 defined as follows. So I have this picture here. u8 has as its elements um, 1, 3, 5, and 7. z2 cross z2 has as its elements 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. We're going to map elements or over as, as drawn in this color coding. So 1 is going to map to 0, 0, 3 is going to map to 1, 0, 5 is going to map to 0, 1, and 7 is going to map to 1, 1. Now to check that this is an isomorphism, for any two elements a and b in u8, or to check that combining them in u8 and then mapping over gives me the same thing as mapping them over and then combining them in z2 cross z2. And let's check that. Um, for 3 and 5. So when I take 3 and 5 and combine them in u8, I get 7. And then when I map 7 over, I get 1, 1. All right? That should be the same thing as mapping 3 and 5 over to get 1, 0 and 0, 1, and then adding them in z2 cross z2 to get 1, 1. And either way, I get 1, 1. So this makes me happy. Um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't confirmed that I satisfy this property of preserving the group operation for all A and B, but it turns out to be true. So algebraically, I've written that here. If I take 3 and 5 and combine them in U8 and then map over, that happens to be the same as if I map v 3 over to, to Z2 cross Z2, map 5 over to z2 cross z2, and then combine them in z2 cross z2 to get 1, 1. All right. So let me discuss this second example here. It turns out that a finite cyclic group of order n is always isomorphic to z mod n, and the isomorphism um, maps this uh, cyclic group generated by A to Zn as follows. The generator raised to the jth power just gets mapped to the integer j mod n. Um, so an example of this would be we looked at the group that's uh, the complex numbers generated by i. So we have i to the first power, which is i, i squared, which is negative 1, i cubed, which is negative i, and then i to the fourth power is 1. So that's a cyclic group, and it's generated by i, and we can obtain an isomorphism to, from that cyclic group to the integers mod 4 just by mapping i to the first power to 1, map i squared to 2, map i cubed to 3, and map i to the fourth to 4. Here we're working mod 4, because these are cyclic groups of order 4. So i to the fourth maps to 4 mod 4, which is 0. Another example of an isomorphism that might surprise you a little bit at first is that the real numbers under addition and the positive real numbers under multiplication, those two groups are isomorphic. It's essentially via this map phi from the real numbers to the positive real numbers, which is exponentiation. So I'll map a real number x to the real number, the positive real number, 2 to the x power. Okay, This is a bijective function. It's 1 to 1 and on to. Its inverse is defined by taking logarithms base 2. Um, and you, we can check this, this property that we preserve the group operation. 
So phi of x combined with y should be the same thing as phi of x combined with phi of y for all possible inputs x and y in my first group, namely the reals under addition. So when I look at phi of x combined with y, I'm combining x and y using the operation my first group, addition. And then when I look at phi of x combined with phi of y, they're combined using the operation of my second group, namely multiplication. And it's true that for any two real numbers, phi of x plus y is equal to phi of x times phi of y. Indeed, phi of x plus y is just 2 to the power x plus y. And then we know that when you add exponents, it's multiplying. So 2 to the power x plus y is just 2 to the x times 2 to the y. 2 to the x is phi of x. 2 to the y is phi of y. And here they're being multiplied together as desired. So in summary, we've, we've uh, uh, verified that this map phi preserves the group structure, i.e. is an isomorphism, because we've checked that phi combined with x plus y is equal to phi of x combined with phi of y for all possible inputs x and y. Here, x and y are just playing the roles of a and b what we saw in our very original definition. By contrast, the map phi from the reals to the reals defined by phi of x is equal to x cubed. It is a bijection. It is one to one and onto, but it is not an isomorphism. It doesn't preserve the group structure. So we can check this phi of x plus y. Well, phi of anything is just that thing cubed. So phi of x plus y is x plus y cubed. That's x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3x squared y squared. Sorry. That's x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. By contrast, what is phi of x combined with phi of y? Well, phi of x plus phi of y is just x cubed plus y cubed. In general, these two things are not equal. And so this map phi does not preserve the group structure and is not an isomorphism. Let me end with a difficult problem, but hopefully it, it excites you. It, it excites you. So let me end with one more example or non-example of an isomorphism. So we're going to prove that the rational numbers under addition are not isomorphic to the rational numbers with zero excluded under multiplication. This is a hard task in general to prove that two groups are not isomorphic. It's much easier, as we did in the example above, to prove that a specific map is not an isomorphism. But now we're trying to prove that two, these two groups are not isomorphic under any map. Okay, so it's sort of impossible to check all potential candidate maps and then rule them out one by one. There's way too many bijective maps you could write down. However, nevertheless, we're still going to succeed here in proving that there's no possible map between these two groups that could be an isomorphism. Okay, so we're, we're sort of going to proceed by contradiction. We're going to suppose we had an isomorphism and then derive a contradiction. So suppose phi were an isomorphism between these two groups. So phi is going to map from the rational numbers under addition to the non-zero rationals under multiplication. Pretend this were an isomorphism. We're going to derive a contradiction. Therefore, there cannot be any such isomorphism. OK. If phi were an isomorphism, then there would be some rational number we could plug into phi whose output is equal to negative 1, right? Negative 1 is a non-zero rational number, and this map phi is supposed to uh, be bijective. It's, in particular, it's supposed to be onto or surjective. surjective. It's supposed to hit every non-zero rational number. So negative 1 is a non-zero rational. OK. So negative 1 is equal to phi of q. Negative 1 is, is hit by q under this map phi. 
in the rationals under addition, q is of course equal to q over 2 plus q over 2, right? q over 2 plus q over 2 is equal to q. So that's all I've done on this equality. And now I'm going to apply the fact that phi is supposed to be an isomorphism. So since phi is an isomorphism, phi of a combined with b is equal to phi of a combined with phi of b. Here, in my first group, I combine two elements by adding, whereas in my second group, I combine two elements by multiplying. So phi of q over 2 plus q over 2 is equal to phi of q over 2 multiplied with phi of q over 2. Finally, note that this is just some number squared. This is phi of q over 2 quantity squared. However, negative 1 is not the square of any rational number. In this group of non-zero rationals, negative 1 is not the square of any uh, rational number. Negative 1 is the square of i, but i is a complex number that's not, not in the rationals. So that's our contradiction. Creatively, we supposed we had an isomorphism. We saw that this would mean we could write negative 1 as phi of somebody. That somebody q is, of course, q over 2 plus q over 2. And then phi of q over 2 plus q over 2 is, by the isomorphism property, phi of q over 2 times phi of q over 2, which is phi of q over 2 squared. But that's a contradiction. In the, in the rational numbers, negative 1 is not the square of any element. Therefore, there can't be an isomorphism between these two groups. All right, so that last example was hard, but I hope it uh, inspired you. There's some cool ideas going on there that I hope you want to learn more about. So thanks, and uh, reach out if you have any questions.